Street Dinner 295. Happy New Year, everyone! First, the superhero takes down the smut peddlers of Gotham in Bat Pussy. Then, in the post apocalypse, sex negatives gather to watch sex shows at Cafe Flesh. Finally, four buxom girls sell lingerie to raise money in Bikini Car Wash Company 2. You don't even know how to eat somebody. You don't even know how to do it. You wouldn't know how if you was doing your grandmother. Welcome back to Junk Food Dinner. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, the next movie on the show tonight is Cafe Flesh from 1982. This was the second film made by the duo of director Rince Dream and Herbert W. Day, the writer. Uh, these, of course, are pseudonyms for Stephen Sayadian uh, as Rince Dream and Jerry Stahl as Herbert W. Day. In a lot of ways, this is a follow-up to their earlier movie, uh, Night Dreams, from 1978, and also kind of a prelude to uh, a later movie, Dr. Caligari, from 89. Uh, features a, a lot of the same crew as those two movies. you got um, Francis Delia as uh, billed here as FX Pope, um, doing the, the cinematography. Um, and I think he also directed Night Dreams um, and, strangely enough, directed the, the Weird Al music video, I Lost on Jeopardy. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of a weird side note for him. Uh, like, like I said, written by Jerry Stahl, who you might know. Uh, outside of these weird pornos, he uh, did uh, a couple episodes of the show Twin Peaks. Uh, he now writes on uh, the TV show Marin. Uh, and he also had a, a pretty well-known book, uh, Permanent Midnight, um, so pretty well, well respected kind of cult author. And uh, Stephen Sayadian um, did this. He did Caligari. He did Night Dreams 2 and 3. And was probably most well known at the time for being a creative director over at Hustler Magazine. Um, and he produced like this series of house ads um, that were kind of like a social satire, um, kind of like a Ron English type thing where he would like mash up um, different cultural icons uh, into porno. So he did like a like a Bob's Big Boy themed uh, porno spread for Hustler Magazine and stuff like that. That was kind of uh, transgressive for the time and also uh, pretty creative. Like um, I-, I think he worked with some really uh, top notch photographers, uh, including FX Pope, who brought kind of a surreal and um, like oversaturated look to-, to these movies that is kind of distinctive. Uh, this also stars Michelle Bauer, uh, credited here as Pia Snow. Um, and, you know, a, a cast of other uh, actors. Uh, I was torn on either picking this or Night Dreams for the show this week. Uh, they both played together at Cine Family a couple of years ago, and I, I saw them there um, and really loved both of them. Um, this one is a little bit more coherent uh, than Night Dreams, which is uh, a little bit more of just kind of a sequence of sketches, although largely that is what this is as well. Uh, but this is, you know, kind of an all-time classic, I think, for for weird pornos. Uh, if you do like this, I would say check out Night Dreams uh, as well. It's a little bit more like his work for Hustler Magazine, a little bit more um, s- satirical, I would say. Uh, but in terms of the plot for this one, uh, it opens up with a pretty funky theme song and then um, like a, a text introduction uh, a la Star Wars to uh, to let you know what's going on in this world. It's, uh, it's basically set in a post-apocalyptic mutant type world where... Uh, most of the people, I think they even say 99% of the people, are sex negatives who are basically allergic to sex. And then the other 1% are sex positive. Uh, and these sex positive people, um, for the most part, end up being performers in this uh, this nightclub called Cafe Flesh, where they, they get up on stage and do a, a bunch of weird sex acts for the sex negative people to watch. Although doesn't quite make sense to me why people who can get horny but not have sex would want to just sit around and watch sex all the time and not be able to act on it. Ask uh, but... my grandpa. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I oh, I, I see what you're saying. Your, your grandpa was, was afflicted with that, with that issue. Well, yeah, my heart goes out to him. Um, yeah. So this one uh, features Andy Nichols, um, who was also in, uh, in the search for the perfect 10, um, he was in Devil and Miss Jones 3 and 4 and, and also Night Dreams. In this, he plays a character named Max, Melodra- Max Melodramatic, who's basically a nightclub comedian. 
uh, slash like sh- host of this show that's going on at Cafe Flesh. Kind of looks like um, Buster Poindexter a little bit um, from from the New York Dolls. Um, he just kind of introduces these various performance art pieces, which are like kind of like like I don't know, like it's almost like a sketch comedy thing, but there's also hardcore sex in it. Uh, he does his own little performances, like um, doing a Marlon Brando impression and stuff like this. Um, it's kind of interesting, actually, how his character like directly makes fun of the porno watching audience. Uh, like he's calling this crowd uh, really pathetic for even wanting to watch these strangers have sex and stuff like that. And it seemed like it was, you know, a direct commentary on the the porno watching crowd of 1982. Uh, but you get this sequence of weird sketches. Like the first one has like these. I don't even know how to describe it. Like these, these like bearded caveman vampires, I guess you would call them <laughs> yeah. uh, in like baby costumes wearing like diapers and bibs and stuff. Uh, and they're like banging, I think they're like ham bones or something onto these high chairs that they're sitting in while they watch a giant rat milkman with a dick for a nose, screw this <laughs> housewife under like all these crazy neon lights and fog effects it's very weird. Like it, it's not erotic at all, but it's, uh, it is shot completely hardcore. Um, it's kind of edited like a music video, like very, um, like edited to the beat. And the soundtrack is actually really cool as well. It's kind of this, uh, new wave slash ambient slash film score type of a, a soundtrack. Like, um, I don't know, kind of Brian Eno esque at, at times, but also, um, uh, more rocking at times as well. Um, the performers in this, I, I think are pretty attractive for the most part. So, you know, the, the added element of, of hardcore action in this is not necessarily a downside, but I do think that this movie would actually still be interesting if you took the hardcore sex out of it. Like you would basically just be left with, uh, this, you know, sequence of weird music videos kind of, and, and they're all pretty interesting. It, it feels a lot like, uh, early MTV, you know, there's a lot of, cool touches in the, in the visual design of these sequences, you know, besides like the neon colors and the fog effects, you have very outlandish costumes. Um, you get these cool shots to the, the people in the crowd who are all also kind of like new wave weirdos. Um, actually including Richard Belzer, who shows up for a minute as, uh, <laughs> this like really weird, like cigarette smoking spaz ball. Who's complaining about something. And, it almost seems like he's doing like a weird caricature of like a black voice. It's a very strange role for Belzer. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a strange movie overall. Um, you know, it does look beautiful. So it makes sense to me that, um, this director would go on to become a a pretty in demand commercial photographer. I think he did, um, album covers for Frank Zappa and a bunch of other artists. Um, like I said, the music's great. Uh, it was produced by this guy, Mitchell Froome, uh, who was, I guess, after this, a, a pretty well-regarded music producer uh, who worked for even the likes of, like, Paul McCartney and, and Bonnie Raitt. So pretty strange career uh, trajectory to go from Cafe Flesh to Bonnie Raitt. But that's <laughs> that's what happened with the Froome, man. Uh, but, yeah, cool cool sounds. Very, like, Oingo Boingo-esque in places. Um, I also think Michelle Bauer is really great in this. Uh, she was... Definitely a, a mega fox at the time and uh, actually does a pretty decent job acting in this movie. Uh, like I said, she appears in this movie under her her porn pseudonym, Pia Snow. Uh, and she did a bunch of weird stuff around this time. Like uh, she was also in Night Dreams, but she was in something called Jane Bonda's Bizarre Workout, <laughs> which is a really weird bondage themed workout video that she did around this time uh, that you should probably check out if you haven't seen it. Uh, and like a couple of those electric blue videotapes and she was doing some weird pornos back then. Um, sadly, I think she uses a stunt body double in the final scene in this, which, you know, is a little bit of a letdown, but, uh, you know, that is what it is. Um, other sketches in this movie include a, um, a pencil, like a, a guy dressed up as a pencil having sex with a woman on a desk, uh, as a secretary takes notes. And, uh, that's a pretty weird one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that this is a really fun one. You know, it's it can be a little bit aggressively obtuse in that like late seventies art film kind of way where characters deliberately state things that are like completely meaningless. Um, but I think that kind of arty pretension comes with this territory. Like if you're gonna make this weird anti porno, you know, some parts of it, you know, twenty, thirty years later are gonna feel pretentious. But overall, I think it's a, a pretty punk rock attempt at merging art films and hardcore pornos. 
you know, there's a lot of satirization of pornos in general in this. And I think Hollywood movies as well. Uh, you know, like a lot of the characters speak in uh, very direct um, kind of stereotypical, like noir character um, postures and stuff like that. So you can feel them kind of riffing on, on the movies of the day. Uh, yeah. And it's only 74 minutes long. So uh, with such cool, like music video type sequences, that cool soundtrack and, and all the, the weird elements in this, I think this is a real winner. But what did you guys think of Cafe Flesh? I have been wanting to see this movie for a long time. As I love Jerry Stahl, uh, Permanent Midnight is one of my favorite books. He did another book called Per of a Love Story that I like a lot. Um, he got his start in Columbus, Ohio, where the Dragon Art Theater is. So, <laughs> uh, I respect that. Like, I always thought that was like a super cool thing to do. And, uh, I always thought working for Hustler was a super cool thing to do, as I love Larry Flint and uh and everything like that so i've always really liked jerry Stahl, and i've always wanted to see this i like that caligari we did it on the show a long time ago um and uh yeah this is pretty cool i read an interview with uh or a quote from an interview um where the, where this rinse dream fella said that he put this movie out and the porno people thought that it was too arty and then the art film people thought it was too porno-y uh yeah. so like kind of nobody liked it and uh, I think that's interesting considering this is like a, you know, one of the few porno films that like, you know, are recognized as art and like we're still talking about, you know, X years later. It's like this movie and, you know, uh, Deep Throat, Devil and Miss Jones, you know, that like are kind of like these, uh, really interesting pieces of art, you know, like more than just, uh, movies where people do sex. And I really yeah. miss these days when, like, you could be, like, this weirdo who's got, like, this real weird artistic vision. And, you know, Hollywood's not going to work out for you. But you could go and make a porn movie where it's, like, you can tell the, you know, tell this weirdo story you have and do it in an artistic way. And, you know, you just got people having sex in there. And it's part of the story. And it is what it is. Like, I like I feel like there's probably not that in porn anymore uh you know like i don't like i mean especially with movies being so easy to make now you can just you know like we were talking about earlier with tangerine just pull out your iphone and you're making a movie so uh i feel like that's not a thing anymore like i don't know it's kind of sad um yeah and yeah although on one hand i do kind of understand like the mentality of how that isn't really good for anybody because like porno people are not looking to make art and porno is not really accepted in even the most underground of of like art a lot of times. So I, I can see how it's like doesn't really satisfy a lot of people because you can't really jerk off to it, but you also <laughs> can't like watch it with your friends. Yeah, it, it it does kind of fall into that weird nether region of of not being able to satisfy either. But I do think that people still do things like this kind of at least. Like I, I know that. uh Who's that? Joanna Angel. She does like those Evil Dead porn parodies and stuff like that. Uh, that are, I mean, they're trying to be somewhat artistic, I think. Yeah, that's true. There's kind of that stuff. Um, but it's, it is, I, I don't know. I, I don't see it in the same vein as this, where this guy, I mean, you feel like he's, he's actually a legitimately, um, competent stylist. Like this movie without the sex would still be an interesting art film. Uh, where I, I don't think you could say that about like the Evil Dead porn parodies that come out today. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think that you could probably, like, you, you could probably take the porn out of this and it'd probably be like an even better and possibly more erotic movie. Well, I think they, I think they filmed it that way. Like, at least I, I think it was an interview with Richard Belzer that I read, uh, where he said that originally they, they came and they, they shot these scenes and nobody said anything about hardcore sex. And then, uh, you know, a few weeks later they shot the sex scenes and cut them in. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I mean, I think in the, you know, in the moment, sure, like, you could be like, oh, well, you know, who who's a movie like this for? But, you know, obviously it holds up. Like, I mean, people are still talking about this movie. So, I mean, you know, it might not be a blockbuster at the time, but people are going to look back and remember you if you make some weirdo crap like this. Sure. Um, and, you know, and it started a bunch of careers. Jerry Stahl and uh, Stephen Sayadian went on to bigger things, so. Yeah, um, you know, it could be used for something. 
Uh, Andy Nichols is fucking amazing in this. I think that guy rules. He's in Devil in Miss Jones 3 and 4, which we talked about on the show. He's in, uh, in Search of the Perfect Ten, which we talked about on the show. He's in this movie called Night of the Living Babes that I want to do at some point on the show. Like he, like he's like, I feel like he's probably, like he's got nothing on IMDb after like 1987. Like he worked from like on 19, what? On, I, on IMDb. <laughs> There's that catchphrase. <laughs> and uh so like I, he like worked in like these weird porn movies. He didn't do sex in any of them as far as I know. Um for like four years. So I, I feel like this guy's like probably some weirdo genius working off, off Broadway somewhere. Like, you know, like to a crowd of like seven people who realize that he's the genius that he is or something. Cause I think this guy's really amazing. Like he has like this weird stage presence and like this cool timing. That's like kind of off beat and like everything that that guy's in. I just think he's like really super cool. And like kind of got like a weird Dana Gould vibe. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. But then, like, he also plays things, like, especially in this movie, like, really kind of, like, off-kilter and, like, avant-garde. And, like, he does that well. And then, like, in Devil and Miss Jones, like, he's, like, this sort of, like, square guy who's, like, just, you know, gruff and normal. And, like, that's his whole thing. And he plays that well. And then he plays, like, this skeezy, uh, you know, like, used car salesman in, in Search of the Perfect Ten. Like, there, I think there's probably a parallel universe out there where this guy's, like, the biggest star on Earth. Like, I, I don't know why more things didn't happen for this guy because he's clearly got talent. Yeah, well, and that's kind of the other thing about this movie that I liked is it, it feels like all of the performers, definitely Andy Nichols, definitely Michelle Bauer, and I think even, like, all the porno performers are in on the joke or, or in on the satire or they, they know what's going on here. You know, compared oh, to something like Bat Pussy, where I feel like uh, those people had no clue what the fuck they were filming. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, this is very satirical. Like, I mean, you know, the idea of making a porno movie where 99% where, where will, where 100% of the people who watch porno in the movie are like these sexless mutants and everybody's obsessed with porn stars. Like, uh, I feel like that's kind of a thing. Like that's sort of being like, Hey, come check out our porno movie where it, punches you in the face and calls you an idiot like to some <laughs> yeah. degree and i think that's really interesting and kind of early to be making that observation like like pre-internet uh for somebody to to you know make that observation i think it's kind of uh interesting yeah and you know almost pre or like right around the time that like porn was just 100 percent vhs like not even far into that phase in making this these observations um so that's cool michelle bauer's cool she was in uh, Puppet Master 3. So that's mm-hmm. cool. Um, yeah, this cast is cool. All these like sets are cool. This is a fun, fun movie. And I would just like sit around and watch it if it didn't have sex in it because it's like pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I've, I've always wanted to see this movie. Has have never seen it. Um, I first got introduced to this, this team when we watched Dr. Caligari on the show. And I had seen clips of Night Dreams here and there, but I'd never really seen much of this. Um, but yeah, this is, if you like Dr. Caligari, if you've seen that, but haven't seen this, uh, this is totally in the same vein. It's still got that kind of crazy, surreal, black backdrop with, you know, super colorful, weird imagery all over the place. And yeah, I mean, I think Dr. Caligari was the next logical step for them. I mean, it took seven years between this and that, but I'm glad that they finally got to the Dr. Caligari point because that feels like a more realized version of this but i feel like this the elements are like so raw and fresh that they work better so that's why it is kind of a bummer that like this wasn't their big breakout non-porno one and they took like all the non-porno stuff and made it into its own thing because i don't know i mean i like even with the porno it's good but like i said it's not like one you can bust out and watch like with friends which is a bummer because there's a lot of like really cool stuff in this that i think cult fans would really enjoy if if they can get past like the porn barrier which i'm sure not a lot of cult fans have a problem with but it's not you know one that you can buy on amazon or get at best buy you know you kind of have to seek it out but Mm -hmm. you know it's it's well worth it, uh, just for the imagery alone. I mean, from a, like, surrealistic, like, very culty, very new wave and poppy kind of standpoint, it's got really cool visuals and really cool music. And like you said, the acting in it is cool. 
Um, it's just, if it's one of these weirdo, you know, you could trip out to it, but you really couldn't jerk off to it. So it's, uh, like you said, Michelle Bauer is awesome. Um, among her other credits, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, um, which she's great in. Uh, but this, yeah, I mean, it, uh, you can tell, like you guys said, everybody in the movie was in on the joke, um, wanted to make it really weird and crazy. And, um, even like the sex performances, like you, the people are enthusiastic about them, which I think goes a long way in these type of movies. Uh, but yeah, there's just a lot of weird stuff, a lot of non sequiturs, lots of just crazy imagery. This is one you could put on. Like if you made a, a sexless version of this, put it on in the background of parties. Uh, and it would make for some cool visual effects. But yeah, uh, I, I want to see all of Night Dreams. Um, because I do want to see like the, the other piece of this like kind of trilogy that they have between Cafe Flesh, Night Dreams, and Dr. Caligari. But yeah, it's, uh, it's weird that there was a whole time when this was a thing, like with all the Gregory Dark stuff we've talked about, um, where these kind of up and coming new wave punky filmmakers were able to, you know, cut their teeth in the world of porno. And yeah, it's, it's a shame that I guess porn people aren't willing to take risks like that because you never know. You could have the next, uh, oh, I don't know. Your next J.J. Abrams on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Let him make a yeah. weird porno. Yeah, especially oh. now that like, I mean, I you know, in the eighties, I'm sure like people would be like, "Oh, you want to direct a music video for us?" Well, you know, you directed uh, Ass Sluts Three, so there's no way you'll you'll never work in this town now, like because porn had like that kind of stigma back then. But now I feel like there there really isn't that stigma. Like, I mean, one of the you know the uh, Oh, what, you know, like the pregnant at 16 girls is like a porn actress now, but still a pregnant at 16 girl. Like, I, you know, I feel like that there isn't really that stigma. So I could imagine this being a world where making like a really cool artistic porn film could lead to legit work. And yet we're not seeing that for some reason. Well, I mean, I think that's because the whole porn industry has changed so much towards, I mean, basically now you can make a porn movie in an afternoon. Like you're not going to do a multi-day porn shoot, I guess, unless you're vivid or, or somebody like that. Uh, for the most part, like it's just the focus is on quantity, not not really quality. Yeah, I mean there is that, but you'd think with like that kind of that carrot dangling out there, that there would be more of a an attempt to kind of show off. But I mean, I you know, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact, like, like I said, like why even bother with porn if you can make a legit movie on your phone? Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, that probably about wraps it up for Cafe Flesh. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the King Car Wash Company, too. So stick around. Thanks for visiting the JFD Video Store. We hope you enjoyed our burning hot takes on this week's selected movie. Check us out on iTunes or junkfooddinner.com for full episodes. The audio version contains three full-length reviews per week, topical news segments, and listener feedback. Great for long commutes, exercise, or surviving the impending apocalypse. Thanks to Chuck Linnington for the on-screen artwork. Email jfdpodcast at gmail.com or check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr or whatever else is going on. We're probably there and want to hear from you. Until next time, keep washing them dishes. I think you just gotta beat that monkey. <laughs>